We are Team Brain Damage from Singapore. Here's a short introduction to our team and our background. Our team, consisting of Li Wen, Sini, Amy, and Neha, is taking part in Robocup Junior on Stage 2021. Our team members have previously taken part in NRC 2019 and RCAP Space 2020. We will be covering the following today. Firstly, our project's plan and aim. Next, our project's development in terms of software, hardware, and communication amidst our team. Thirdly, we will be evaluating our robot and its performance. Lastly, we'll be discussing our hardware and electronic design, our software algorithm, important highlights of our robot, and points of improvement along with our learning experience throughout the preparation for this competition. Let's move on to our planning process and aims of our project. Number three. There were three things that we looked out for in order to bring our robot and its performance to the next level. Originality was of our utmost priority. We looked at old videos of other robots that were previously made for on-stage competitions and eliminated ideas based on what was already done. Looking through the videos, we realized that fighting robots had not been made and due to the fact that the majority of our members had a keen interest in playing games that involved fighting characters, we decided to portray this through our robot's performance. Originality was not the only thing that we needed. It was important that our robot showcased something snazzy. This is where we decided to incorporate computer vision through the use of Raspberry Pi, our Pi in short. We decided that since we were going to simulate an arcade game setting, some inputs would be required. And these inputs would be in the form of text or gestures. Computer vision was part of the complex bits of our performance. The storyline was made to be not as complex so that the software algorithm could shine. Now onto how we achieved our aim. In order to incorporate proper fighting, we had to ensure that the robots would be able to pick themselves up. To curb this issue, we decided to incorporate a frame. A carriage was attached to the frame such that the pole that the robot was built around would be maneuvered by the carriage. To facilitate this movement, we had to make use of PVC pipes for the structure of the robot since they are lightweight yet sturdy enough to hold our robot together. In terms of software, we made use of computer vision as mentioned earlier. If text such as punch was shown, the robot would process this input and display actions accordingly. Post estimation was also used in order to incorporate gesture recognition as a form of input. Lastly, communication. COVID-19 was a hard blow to our team since they shortened the amount of time we had together as a team to prepare for the competition. We had difficulties in managing with the situation at hand since it was uncertain. Initially, we had planned to make two robots which would fight each other, but due to time constraints, we were only able to make one. The sessions we had at our design and technology studio where the robot is located was sparse and unpredictable due to changing COVID guidelines. We had to instead meet up through Zoom sessions online and were completely unable to work on the structure of our robot for months. But despite all that, we've persevered and put our best foot forward to display what we have despite the drawbacks. The next slide shows how we intended to put a frame to work. The frame itself is made out of metal. A combined total of four carriages work together synchronously to move our robot. The carriages were made out of Lego EDC parts with wooden elements incorporated into it in order to mount our DC motors onto the carriage. The carriages travel along the Y axis and transport a metal pole. The metal pole then has two more carriages which are attached to the robots as seen in the video above. Here's a picture. Here's a picture of our robot. It uses an Arduino connected to a servo chute which connects to multiple servos attached to our robot. We designed joints and horns for the servo using fusion and printed them out. Next, we assembled the PVC pipes and attached the 3D prints onto it using nuts and bolts. This paper and masking tape were added to add volume to our robot. So, how did our robot do? Well, we had a good steady structure that was able to support itself even without the frame. When we had tested the servos individually, the limbs could be maneuvered and depict what we wished for it to do. So what went not so well? We were unable to get the code running in time since COVID-19 had limited the amount of time we had at hand for testing and trying out whether what we had worked. But last but not least, 
Moving on to discussion, conclusion and our learning experiences. So in terms of discussion and conclusion, here is some information about our hardware design and electronic design as well. So for our hardware design, we made use of a frame in order to ensure stability and to optimize the use of space. As mentioned earlier, we decided to make use of a frame so as to ensure that we could optimize the amount of space that we had and also ensure that our board would be able to stand upright especially since we were trying to simulate an arcade game of fighting robots. Uh, in terms of electronic design, our electronic design was minimalistic. In order to accommodate what we had to do in a simple manner, we did not wish to entangle ourselves in complicated wiring processes, hence we decided to stay simple and do a simple circuit. Next on to what could have been done better. So firstly, we could have planned better as to what to do during each session as a team. We personally feel that there was little planning done and due to this, we were stumbling on what we had to do for each session. This resulted in quite a bit of waste of time and this prevented us from moving forward quickly. Additionally, we could have a better and more thorough timeline so as to facilitate our planning before each session. Next, we felt that we could have delegated the work more effectively so that a lot of people wouldn't be working on a menial task. And lastly, we could keep leveraging on each person's strengths to get things done quickly and more efficiently. Since different people had different strengths in dif uh, different areas, we could have leveraged on that in order to get our things done quickly. In terms of learning points, here are two main takeaways from this journey of ours. Firstly, time management. We learned through this competition that time management is key, so as to be able to finish our tasks on time. We learned that if we needed to get something done, then we would surely have to make time for it, so as to finish it within the given deadline. Secondly, we realized the importance of planning. Even though the COVID-19 situation was unpredictable, we could have organized ourselves better and attempted delegating the work amongst the group members better so that we would not have too many people unnecessarily working on the same thing. We would like to thank RCAP 2021's organizing committee for the opportunity to be able to go through this journey. We had gotten the chance to learn more with the hands-on experience and were also able to forge meaningful connections with our team. Thank you for your time. 